commence your chakra reading. I invite in your spirit guides. I invite in my spirit guides. Got loud fast. Doesn't normally get loud that quickly. All right. Okay, so while I'm shuffling the cards, I want to kind of talk from the heart a little bit. There are a lot of reasons why we will either just blatantly ignore red flags or, you know, kind of rose-colored glasses, not see them. And oftentimes it is abandonment wounds. And sometimes it is because we don't quite understand that we deserve better. But a lot of times it's actually because we see the potential in this person. And I'm really picking up on that one for you. I believe that you have the ability to see the greatness in somebody, but that doesn't mean that that's who that person is. So I, I don't want you to lose trust in yourself. I want you to acknowledge that you like to look for the good in others and that maybe you make them out to be more than they are. And in the future, I think going forward, whenever you are establishing relationships with people and determining, you know, who you're going to allow in your life and whatnot, that you look at their potential, but you actually hold them accountable for their current day actions. <laughs> so what they're telling me to tell you is that one of the key, one of the best ways that we can get this going and, and get this going quickly is to every morning check in with your inner child, mother her. Hey, how are you? How'd you sleep? What would you dream about? Oh, this is what I dreamed about. This is what we're going to do today. What are you excited about today? really, really, really get to know that inner child, right? And as you get to know her, you can show up for her and show her that, hey, I've got this and I love you and I'm here for you and I'm not going anywhere. You're not going to be alone. And at that, I think that's going to start healing that abandonment issues. All right, I'm laying the cards. We're going to go with the lower four chakras first and then we'll go with the last three. All right, actually, no, we're going to do three, then we're going to do the heart and then we're going to do the next three. That's what, that's what they're telling me to do. Okay, so off top, I can tell that the root chakra is super imbalanced right now, baby. We'll get this solved. Okay, so from the way that the cards are all facing that direction on the root chakra, I can tell that your root is really looking to the past. I think that you're kind of stuck right now. Um, <clears throat> from what I can gather on these cards, it appears that you were looking to help someone and while you did that it kind of broke you in the process and it made it where you could not take care of yourself anymore like the self-care was gone your extra money was gone your time for yourself was gone and you trying to help them essentially uh, just messed you up and it broke your heart so with this affecting your heart chakra you know I made that video the other day about the heart wants to forgive and that is a huge focus for the collective right now, the heart chakra and forgiveness. I think we're all kind of working through some blocks right now. Now, I do believe that that forgiveness, you know, should be extended to that other person. Absolutely. Especially if there's any kind of resentment going on. But, um, what I'm really feeling is that forgiveness is for you. So luckily on the sacral chakra, uh, what's going on is very obvious to me. This is a blockage of being able to fully express yourself. Now that is going to be your passions, your creations, as well as your truths, which might be why we kind of ignored some of those red flags in the past. I know I had said that the sacral chakra was blatantly obvious to me, so I want to show you what I mean by that. So on this nine of wands here, that lets me know that in the past something happened that made you feel the need to set up a defense system. Um, I don't know if you were creatively or vocally expressing yourself at that time, but uh, it didn't go well and you felt the need to fight. Uh, the Hierophant is a card of like tradition and societal norms and conforming to the status quo, right? It's also a card of kind of like trying to get validation and, and hope and external beliefs, okay? So what I'm seeing here is that you set up that defense because whenever you put yourself out there they were like oh no that's not what we do that's not tradition that's not the norm maybe you were trying to like call somebody out in the family like black sheep status and they're like oh no we don't do that here what happens in these four walls stays in these four walls kind of thing and then the three of wands reversed that is a card of a bad reaction from society so like once again it's just really validating that you put yourself out there and it did you didn't get the reaction you were hoping for and i believe that that caused you to shut down a little bit now, with it affecting your crown chakra like that, it's probably stifling your imagination a little bit. Okay, so they're really showing us what happened here. Okay, so on the solar plexus, we have the six of, the six of coins, which is a card of like equal give and take, right? So 
you know, we had talked about in the root chakra, you were helping that individual. And I think in a lot of your relationships, there was an equal give and take. You were giving more than you were receiving. And I think it was depleting you and making you feel ways you didn't, excuse me, quite realize, um, which led to the five of cups, right? Super disappointment. And honestly, I can kind of feel the anger with this card. Um, like instead of the cups falling over, it's almost like he was pissed off and kicked the cups over kind of thing. But I think that's where logic kind of started to go out the window and where you lost a little bit of trust in yourself. This card was reversed, the King of Swords. So this is like your ability to really make logical decisions without your emotions being involved. Um, and then that led to a, a solar, or I'm sorry, a sacral chakra blockage. Um, which says it is easy for me to adapt to the flow and the rhythms of life. And this helps me to grow in a happy way. So I think that it's like in addition to the fact that it kind of made you feel like you can't express yourself and your truths and your, and like who you are really, it stifled your passions. It stifled your imagination. It stifled your ability to trust yourself. And it kind of stifled your ability to adapt. You know, with these being in relation to the solar plexus specifically, that is our center of self. That's where our self-confidence, our self-esteem, our self-worth, our self-power, everything comes from there, right? It's like, that's where like our inner fire is at. So with it being the six of coins, part of that tells me that you kind of find your your self-worth in how you are able to help others. Like, I think that is a big thing for you. Uh, like your personal power might be influenced by how well you're able to provide. Um, <clears throat> and then with the King of Swords, I'm so sorry, I cannot stop clearing my throat. With the King of Swords being reversed, that kind of lets me know too that like whenever you're not able to really authentically express yourself and like set healthy boundaries, that that's going to mess with your confidence dramatically. And I think that that is kind of why it started to affect your your sacral chakra because um, if we're feeling like we're not in our power and we can't be confident then how can we express ourselves right all right let's dive into the heart chakra now which is in my opinion one of the most important chakras to focus on um, our heart chakra it, it's the bridge between our uppers and our lower chakras so whenever it is healthy all of our other chakras stand much better of a chance to be healthy but also they can they can interact with each other better because the bridge is open and clear um also we manifest from our heart chakra our you know that that toric field that's coming from the heart chakra so all of our chakras are connected it's like a highway inside of our body and the heart chakra and the elbow chakra is having issues right now so our elbow chakras are a minor chakra and they um they regulate and govern what we accept and pull in and push away from our lives. So this card reads, I accept with gratitude and consistency. So that is telling me that you are not open to receiving right now. Um, we have shut down the, 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 I think we've shut down the trust that other people can pour into us correctly. That's, that's what I'm picking up on intuitively. Um, also, I know that you know the power of gratitude, so I don't think it's that you're not operating in gratitude, but I think that you, mm, yes, okay, you're operating with gratitude, but you're not operating in gratitude. Okay, so the card that is drawing my attention the most is this Queen of Pentacles reversed. With this card being in context with the heart chakra, it makes me wonder if you are once again, it's kind of validating that, you know, are you open to receiving? I'm wondering if you're not a little emotionally overwhelmed right now, and if you're struggling to find balance in self-care and in nurturing your environment and nurturing yourself and your relationships, and possibly if you are maybe not open right now to fully giving and receiving love. And then we have this Ace of Wands here, and this card, I... I'm struggling to piece together, but I'm going to just, just ride the train with me. Okay. So first I noticed this castle and then I noticed that this looks like the fairy godmother wand. And then I was looking at the queen of pentacles and thinking about the mother wound and it started reminding me of my own past. Um, I definitely had a Cinderella story. Um, my stepmother was six years older than me. I was 13. Kind of gross. Anyway, um, she hated me and she made my life miserable. And so I moved out at 15. I had, yeah, I had to. Uh, and you know what? I had to put up with shit from people because I had nowhere else to go. Like the people that I was living with, if they were up to no good, I wouldn't have 
It's not like I could have called them out. You know what I mean? So I'm wondering if uh, maybe some of your issue is like maybe you had a similar story and maybe that's why you ignored some of those red flags because you had no other option. Now on your throat chakra, the first thing that I'm noticing is all that blue and I love that. Um, I'm noticing that everything is upright. It does seem like vocally, so okay, in prior it was like, are you able to vocally express your truth? And now it's appearing that your throat chakra is not having any blockages. So you're definitely able to vocally express yourself. The next thing that I'm really liking to see here and that caught my eye is that your throat chakra and your connection to your solar plexus is open and flowing, so that's great. Uh, and you had said that you didn't want to live in fear, right? And this card says, I thank my fears for their care and allow them to have an equal position in my circle of advisors. And what this card is talking about is how our fears really are just trying to keep us safe. And if we can acknowledge them for that, then we can just kind of navigate through life a little easier um, and we can acknowledge that hey they're just trying to make sure that we don't get hurt here but we don't have to unpack and live there we don't have to like, interact and like make that fear come to life so uh, what I'm seeing here like while I do see that your throat chakra is open uh, like I, I do believe that you can vocally express yourself I do still see that you're kind of struggling to pick which inner voice you want to go with and that is reflected in the Seven of Cups. This is a card of choices. Um, sometimes it's about having your head in the clouds. What I'm kind of picking up on here is that there are a lot of external and internal influences on your voice and who you want to be and how you want to express yourself. And specifically with this reading, what I'm picking up on is that it was hard for you to figure out how to stand your ground and how to express that. So what we did instead was kind of like shut down. But at this point in time, you are open, you're talking to yourself, you're looking at the problems, you're looking at your emotions, you're looking at your communication skills, and you're pouring, you're pouring love into yourself. Just getting this reading was pouring love into yourself. You are solving these problems. Just continue to, continue to find your voice, continue to express who you are. Whenever you find yourself scared, take a step back and ask yourself a bunch of questions. What are you scared of? What's the worst case scenario? How can we avoid that happening? Um, all right, at last we are to where your discernment lies, which is in your third eye and in your crown chakra. Now on your third eye chakra, um, it's letting us know that it's actually interacting with your auric field right now. Um, and it's the auric field of your emotional body, which is about four inches or so away from your skin. I'm going to show you a picture here so you can see it in your third eye. Um, so it is this one right here. So what the card reads is flowing freely. My emotional body is becoming stronger from one second to the next. What this card is telling me is that we need to get you, well, you need to get yourself into a meditative state and imagine a future because you know whenever we're imagining in our head that we're actually manifesting so imagine a future that you are surrounded in healthy relationships you have healthy boundaries set up your friends have healthy boundaries set up um imagine a future that your discernment is so on par that no one can get anything past you imagine a future that you trust yourself we can you can play around in your head and I swear it makes your life, girl. I swear it does. There's been some thoughts I just thought I was imagining and, you know, they happen, especially if you can get some emotion involved with it. And we can reverse engineer that. You know, you can, you can imagine that life in your head and then you can play backwards the steps for how to get there. You are going to get there. Um, at this point, I, I believe that the spread has shown us, you know, what happened and the whys and hows and the ins and outs of it. But I believe now we are seeing the future, uh, which is that if you can face your fears and work through these nightmares, you will come out on the other side. The moon is reversed. That is clarity after, you know, a long period of difficulty. And then with the judgment card there too, that's really just showing that this is going to be over. There will be a rebirth. Your discernment, you will be able to trust it. And your third eye will definitely be super open at that point. Now, moving on to your crown, your crown does have to do with your intuition and discernment, but that's more on the third eye side. Um, the crown will do with like your discernment, talking to your higher self, and um, it's like your connection to the divine and to the spiritual realms. And it is, the pathway is open. This is not a blockage, but right now it is interacting with the palms of the hands. And it says, I skillfully shape my works. 
to me that says that your your higher self and your spirit team is trying to interact with you through your hands and if you find yourself kind of like doodling or maybe like making some stuff like do i don't know just doing things with your hands it's not typical uh pay attention because that is 100 percent your team or you trying to come through and interact so what i'm seeing in the crown chakra is an evolution and this is why i was saying like this is a major moment of growth for you so the four of coins being reversed is letting me know that you are letting go of some things that you were holding on to, things limiting beliefs, things that you thought were keeping you safe that you realized weren't really keeping you safe. And it's probably, you know, just realizing the stuff like you are getting this reading and, and you know, realizing, that, hey, my discernment's a little off. And you know what, I actually, I, I don't like the way my relationships are working out. Um, and at, at that point, now you are in the hangman position. You're realizing, I need a rebirth. I need a change. Uh, so you're going to go through this process. And the hangman is one of my favorite cards. My ability to change is one of my favorite qualities about myself. Um, and then that that's leading you to the Queen of Swords, which is the seeker of truth, the seeker of clarity. You, you are going to come out on the other side of this, and you will be able to speak your truth. You will be able to have discernment. You will be able to kind of like end the line of bullshit. My favorite thing about the Queen of Swords is she she doesn't put up with it. She puts an end to it. The pain ends with her. She stops cycles. She's a cycle breaker. She's a badass, all right? And she definitely says whatever needs to be said to people. She sets boundaries. She does not let people walk all over her. This has been a long reading, but I have a few more things to say and then it'll be over. So it just dawned on me whenever I was setting down that card. Go write write letters, write letters to you, write letters to other people, write letters to your past self, to your future self, to your mama, to your daddy, to the person that pissed you off down the road. Your higher self is coming through your hands. You could channel to write your ass off right now. Alrighty, I'm going to wrap this up now with journaling is going to be your best friend, especially with your higher self coming through your hands right now. Uh, I am going to send you some shadow work prompts and some journal pages with your stickers, and I'm going to send you an email that has just some reflective prompts for right now. Um, Meditation is wonderful. Between Spotify and YouTube and all the different platforms, you can find a guided meditation for anything. You can do meditations for your chakras. You can do meditations for this specific problem even. And what your team is telling me is that within seven months, you will see that you're living a much different lifestyle, a much healthier lifestyle with yourself, and you will find that there are much healthier relationships around you.